Good day, welcome to Spartan Entertainment and Electronics. Today we're going to talk about what to do while you're stuck at home during the uh, human malware situation. We're going to have a look today at EA Origin. I know there's going to be some mixed perceptions on this. EA is not well received by some. I personally believe they've got a lot of great quality games and I have no issues recommending some of their services and some of their games. With that, I'm looking specifically at EA Origin Access. Um, two levels of it, there's basic, there's premiere, extra content uh, is included in the premiere, not included in the basic, but that's not true of all games. Some of the games have expansion content included in the basic, you just don't get as much of it, it's usually for older games. Star Wars, the first Star Wars Battlefront from 2015, all the expansion content for that game is in the basic vault. So with that, I would recommend the basic five bucks a month or 30 bucks a year. I do have EA access on my Xbox. Uh, same price, 30 bucks a year. I'm happy with it. I play a lot of games out of it. There's a lot of great content on it. So with that, we'll jump over to the vault and see what I would recommend for games. All right. So as you can see, there's a lot of games here. Um, it's quite a few really high quality games as well. EA has a, a very diverse catalog. My list, fair warning, is Star Wars heavy. Uh, EA has the rights to Star Wars and Star Wars content. As such, my list is Star Wars heavy because they have all the games. So here we go. Starting with, hey, imagine that, a Star Wars game. Star Wars Battlefront 2. Uh, I played it, for, played it on Xbox One. I absolutely love it. It has a great single player story. The multiplayer is a lot of fun. They're constantly bringing new content to it. There was all the controversy when it first came out, but if you can ignore that, it is a fantastic game. Single player campaign, you play as Iden Versio, goes through her story and the collapse of the Empire and the hours after, hours, days, and weeks after the collapse of the Empire. They've added heroes and villains to multiplayer. Uh, they've done a lot with this game to make it fantastic. Uh, really recommend playing this. Forget about all the crap you heard about the controversy. They've done a lot with this game and it is absolutely amazing. Second on my list is Titanfall 2. Uh, Titanfall 1 and 2. Uh, 1 didn't have the single player component. 2 does. Again, fantastic story. It kind of got lost in the shuffle. There was two other AAA titles came out at the same time as this. Titanfall 2 kind of got lost in the mix, which is really unfortunate because it was a fantastic game. The single play story is amazing. The multiplayer, I didn't get too much into. Again, I played this on Xbox One. Didn't get too much into the multiplayer, um, but what I did play, I really enjoyed. Lots of customization options for your pilot and for your Titan. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. The single player campaign, I think I was through it in about seven hours, but it was really, really enjoyable. Continuing on down the list here, Plants vs. Zombies games are fun. They're not on my list, but they're a lot of fun. Uh, original Battlefront and Battlefront 2 are on here. Again, really fun games. Not on my list. Mirror's Edge Catalyst is the next one on my list, both the first game and the second game. Uh, second game is Catalyst, first game is just Mirror's Edge. Um, I haven't played these games, they're on my two play list. Um, they look like a lot of fun, parkour, high action, I'm really looking forward to them. I just haven't had a chance to play them yet, I haven't been able to set aside the time to do it. So, those are on my list for myself to play as well as a game I would recommend for others. As you can see there's Lego games on here, more uh, the original Star Wars Battlefront. Not the original, the 2015. There's a lot of the older Star Wars games. Some really good games there. Dark Forces. Like There's a lot of good games on here. Jedi Knight Academy. The next one on my list, however, is LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga. This is a... It's a bit of an older game. Um, but it's LEGO and it's a lot of fun. It's something you can sit down and play with the kids. It covers the first six movies. It's not the Skywalker Saga. The Skywalker Saga is going to cover all nine. This only covers the first six. Um, episodes one through six. 
you know, a lot of fun. Lots of characters to unlock and lots of gameplay to get through. Um, there is no dialogue in that one. That's before they started doing voice acting with their characters, but I, I think that adds a, a quirkiness and a fun to it that you don't get on the newer LEGO games. I originally had Star Wars Empire at War on my list, but there's other more exciting games, in my opinion. Uh, the Plants vs. Zombies games are on the list. Not necessarily the Garden Warfare. I like the original ones. Uh, they're more strategy. The Garden Warfare are more shooter type, third person shooter, I believe. I haven't played the Garden Warfare games. I really enjoy the original game, though. The top-down strategy, so... The games are a lot of fun. Lots of content in them. Uh, there's a lot of garden... Or there's a lot of Plants vs. Zombies games. There's another one, Battle for Neighborville. I believe that's actually an expansion. Not 100% certain on that, however. Yeah, Plants vs. Zombies. Great series of games. A lot of fun to play. Great for the kids. Again, all the old Star Wars stuff's on here. Battlefield Hardline I wasn't a big fan of, but it's on all the, a lot of the Battlefield games are on here. Uh, the next pair of games on my list is The Force Unleashed and The Force Unleashed 2. A little bit older of games, they're a little bit older of games, they're action adventure games. Um, hack and slash melee type. Lots of upgrading for your characters and what have you. For your character, who plays the one guy. Um, different story endings based on how you play the game, light side, dark side, um, that comes more in in the second one. This is the Ultimate Sith Edition, comes with all the DLC and expansions, so that's pretty cool. Um, there's a lot of content in the first game, there's even more in the second game. They are, they're a lot of fun. Um, great Star Wars story. I don't know if it's canonical or not anymore, but they are, they are great games. Next up on my list, there are other LEGO games on here, um, other than just LEGO Star Wars. The LEGO Star Wars games are a lot of fun, as are the other LEGO games. Uh, uh, LEGO Movie Video Game. This was the one that had caught my eye. Um, definitely recommend it. it, it they're, they're LEGO games. They're a lot of fun. There's lots of hours of content there. They're great to play with the family. Um, again, available on console as well. But today we're talking about the PC version. So. so that was LEGO Movie the Video Game. Moving on with the list. Next up we have the Mass Effect series. There's Mass Effect 3, 2, 1, and Andromeda is in here somewhere. I must have scrolled past it. Ah, uh, here's Plants vs. Zombies Game of the Year Edition. This is the one I was thinking about. I didn't see kind of more of a top-down. You plant your creatures and the zombies come and attack you. It's a lot of fun. Anywho, back to Mass Effect. So, as I was saying, Mass Effect 1, 2, 3, and Andromeda are all on here. They're all really great games. Um, I've watched a lot of gameplay footage. I haven't played them as of yet. Again, they're on my list of games to play. I just haven't made the time to play them. I have a long list of stuff to get through. <laughs> so, this is Mass Effect 3. Um, shooter game, RPG. There's hours and hours and hours and hours hours of content between the four games and the expansion stuff which is all included in EA Origin there's just tons and tons of content for th four fantastic games Andromeda wasn't received very well oh there's Andromeda right there uh, my understanding is they've repaired a lot of the issues that plagued it at launch and it is a decent game at this point a playable game Again, I haven't played it myself, so I can't confirm that. Next on the list was the Command & Conquer Ultimate Collection. I grew up playing Command & Conquer, so when I saw this collection, I had to buy it. It includes all of the Command & Conquer games. Um, Red Alert, the original Command & Conquer. It's just... Oh, there's so much content here. I bought it outright. I think I paid 30 or 40 bucks for the whole collection. Um, there's just so much content here and hours and hours and hours of gameplay. 
Um, I don't think you can go wrong buying this outright. Oh, here we go. Here's the list. It's the original Command and Conquer with the expansion. Red Alert with its two expansions, also known as Command and Conquer 95. Tiberian Sun with its expansion. Command and Conquer Red Alert 2 with its expansion. You've got Renegade Generals with its expansion. Command and Conquer 3 with its expansion. Red Alert 3 with its expansion. And to close out the collection is Command and Conquer 4. I haven't played a few of these games. I've played most of them. I absolutely love the Command and Conquer series, and I would not hesitate to recommend this collection to anybody. Um, if you have any interest in real-time strategy, this collection's where it's at. Um, like I said, I bought it outright. I think the price is down to about twenty dollars Canadian right now. I bought it for thirty or forty, and I have no regrets whatsoever. So, great pickup. Even if you don't want to do EA Origin access. Um, just the standalone game itself is a huge, huge collection that I would not hesitate to recommend. The so last entry on the list almost didn't make it in because I had a list of 10 and was going to quit scrolling. I was like, oh, I'll keep looking anyway. So I kept scrolling. Collections like the Medal of Honor, knowing that all the Battlefield games are in here. There's just a whole bunch of retro games. Or not retro, but, you know, older. There is so much great content on here. Now we're starting to get into the upgrading content. Like, there is just a ton of content in here. Garden Warfare 2 Deluxe Upgrade included in Basic. Battlefront Deluxe Edition Upgrade. A whole bunch of content for Need for Speed Rivals. Which, Need for Speed is another series I would recommend. There's not a lot of games on the Basic the newer stuff's on Premiere, but... So I kept scrolling down, and I came across these two gems. Knights of the Old... Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic and Knights of the Old Republic 2, the Sith Lords. Holy crap, I cannot recommend these games enough. They are freaking amazing games. Again, 40, 50, 60 hours worth of gameplay. Um, there's just a massive amount of content... It's starting to work its way back into canon, which is also pretty awesome. Um, yeah, easily 50 or 60 hours per game of gameplay for your first time through. Somebody who's played it two or three times might be able to get through it a little bit quicker, but there is just a crap ton of content. Between these two games and the fact that both of them are in here is just a huge added bonus. Again, it, this is, I couldn't have found a better way to round out this list. There is just such amazing content here. You can't go wrong. Again, I would recommend Basic over Premiere at this point in time. Premiere does have some of the newer games. Not some of it, has the newer games. Jedi Fallen Order, great game. Um, Anthem, from what I understand, has been fixed and is now a good game. Need for Speed Heat. Uh, Command & Conquer Remastered Collection. I'm probably going to end up buying this, but it's there. It's a remaster of all the original games. Or not all, but it's a remaster of some of the original games. Um, so yeah, there's a little bit more content with Premiere as opposed to Basic, um, especially on the newer end of games, but for where it's at right now, I personally, unless you're committed to playing something like Fallen Order or Need for Speed Heat, unless you're committed to playing a game in the Premiere Collection, I would recommend Basic. Basic has a ton of content for 30 bucks a year. Um, I would also go the yearly just because it's a better deal. Five bucks a month at 12 months, you're paying 60 bucks, 30 bucks a year, half price for the same amount of time. Um, the upside to monthly is you can cancel or pause it whenever you want. So if you only want it for a month, you're only paying five bucks. It just depends on how much you plan on playing it. So yeah, that would be my recommendation is to go basic. Like I said, that's my list in no particular order of my top 10 games to play out of EA Origin Access Basic. Uh, comment down below. Let me know what games out of the vault would have your interest, what you would want to play out of there or what you have played, what you're going to play, whichever the case may be. If you can support the channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing, that would be greatly appreciated. And we'll see you next time.